Welcome back to episode number two. We're gonna install some piston rings today, and we're gonna install the oil cool over there that's on the other bench. Maybe we'll get a bench rest, so we'll see what else we can find today before it gets too late and I gotta go to bed. All right, let's get to it. Okay, piston rings. So you're usually gonna have a rail ring on the bottom. You're gonna have an expander ring, which usually looks like a waffle shaped style ring. And then obviously you'd have another rail ring that would go on top. Then you'd have your second compression ring, right? Your second, then your top. Um, I have an upgraded version of it. So it's basically two in one. And the spring actually sits in the center. So basically this goes in first and then we're gonna put our, uh, I guess you'd call this like your, your rail ring, but it's kind of like all two in one. So I will throw that on there. Um, make sure you have, there's engine oil. I just dip my finger in there. First of all, excuse the nub glove. It kind of flops around, but don't really have a choice. So get that one looped up. I have the piston just lightly pressed into a Oh, there we go. Into the vise here with a rag. As right, so you see here, got a little bit of a, it's like a piece of wire or spring, whatever, that obviously holds it all in again. You gotta try and get it all in there and it's being super ignorant. Doesn't wanna go back in. Get back, there we go. All right, so, like that. There we go. All right, now we got our double side piece here. I'm sure that uh, some of you probably know way more than I do. You would know exactly what this uh, upgraded oil ring, I guess you'd call it. So make sure that's seated right on to the inside of the spring. So you can see the piston still moves around. I don't have it clamped in here very tight. So I got the spring on the inside, and I got that ring basically on the out. A little bit of a spring to it, like that. Next, it's gonna be our second ring. You're gonna dip your finger in there. In there, get it all looped up. I like to try and get started down here on the bottom, basically walk it around. So that I totally suck at it. That's okay. Turn up a little. There we go. And second ring in there. Yeah. Of your glove here. Okay, so second ring. Now we're gonna go to the top ring. Same thing. I already got oil on my oil on my hand and stuff. So kind of get it all cleaned up. Turn on one side. Walk it around. Go locked in place. Now you're gonna see we got three gaps here. We want to make sure that these are totally opposite opposite to each other or you're going to have really bad time. You're going to have oil everywhere. So I usually try and put that guy at 45. We'll rotate this top 180. So it is totally opposite of our second ring. 45 there. So 45 from here to here and then this top one is a total 180 to the other side. And that's piston rings. Just kidding. So, I uh, actually made a mistake and I wasn't paying attention because obviously when you're doing a video, you don't really... I suck at it, but anyway, <laughs> that's besides the point. Uh, so, your expander ring uh, on the very bottom here, we said 45. I actually rotated the top to 180. We're just going to take this bottom guy and we're going to rotate this all the way 180 of the top. And the reason why is because we want to make sure that this... And this and this are, are all basically as far away as possible. So oil filter bracket and our oil cooler. Um, I actually couldn't find any info on torque specs, so I actually ended up uh, using the old Google machine and uh, found the torque specs for it. So the bolts for the actual cooler itself are 10 foot-pounds, and then all of your bolts around, obviously, your oil filter bracket are going to be 15 foot-pounds. Uh, there is one thing that they do want you to check, which is the oil pressure relief valve. Uh, basically, their spec is to loop it up full of oil, drop it down in the hole, and as long as it goes down in the hole smoothly, which we're going to find out, it'll be good. So, here's the hoping. Loop it all up. 
and what you get. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> Drops down nice and smooth. Uh, so that's that. Um, the top bolt, I guess, for the oil pressure relief valve, I could not find torque specs for, so I am going to put it as FT. If you don't know what FT means, I'll let you search that on your own. Oil filter bracket is installed. I actually did find the torque specs for this, um, these two. You are 27 foot pounds. So um, you could put them FT if you wanted to, but I did try to find the correct one. So 27, the actual oil cooler, which are these four studs, 10 foot pounds. All your perimeter bolts and studs are all 15 foot pounds. Made it this far, we're now installing the crankshaft. So there's a couple things when it comes to installing your crankshaft. First, go and buy this. Assembly lube, it doesn't have to be Lucas. Just make sure you buy assembly lube and use it because this stuff is cheap, your engine is not. Um, second, there is a oil coating on your main bearings. Get rid of it, clean it up, um, just like a solvent, just to get that oily crap out of there. Um, so you obviously have two. There is the upper, right? There's no oil passage your lower, which will go into the block. Looks like that, it's got an oil passage for it. We'll line it up. You'll see there's a tang as well. Let's install. Basically you want to snap these bearings. There's, there we go, them all the way in. Now there is a oil passage on the end. You want to make sure obviously it's lined up with that. Make sure you're nice and even. All the way along. Make sure you don't get your glove stuck in there because that happens to me all the time. Snap this in here. You guys kind of get the gist of it. Just set them in. You don't gotta ram them in there. Sometimes they snap, sometimes they just sit by side. You just wanna be flush on both ends. Lined up, all my holes line up, and then you want to make sure you do never forget the step. Get it all in there. This assembly loop is super important, guys. I can't stress that enough. Make sure they're all good and lubed up for the crank to go in, and yeah. So, so now that your crankshaft is in, and all you got left is your thrust washers. So you have obviously two different styles. You have this guy here, which goes to the bottom. So the dimple side goes out for the wear side for your crankshaft. So this guy goes in. Clean the smack. Get in there. Apparently. I'm struggling. There we go. Get in there. There we go. Goes all the way around like that. Push it over. Give your other thrush washer. Give it some lube. And again, your. I guess you could call them like the dimples. That goes out towards the crankshaft. That's the wear side. Drop that guy in there. Nice. And there you are. Thrush, thrush washers are in. So we got half of the crankshaft bearing caps in. So you can see no groove. Got lots of oil in there. There's an arrow, make sure you don't spill any oil here. Arrow that always faces towards the front of the block. Just like that. Now you just try and center with one. Take your rubber mallet, just give it a couple of taps. Go. That could be the total wrong way to do it, but that's how I do it, I guess. So, got one more left. Um, gotta to torque the crank. And uh, bottom end's good to go. Almost forgot thrust washers. Don't forget those. The tabs up. 
And your bearing caps are 76 foot-pounds, so make sure your torque goes correctly.